everybody. We were here tonight to meet the candidates. Uh, my name is Louis Santoro. I'm a Village Manor resident for over 60 years. I served on the Village Board from 2010 to 2018 as trustee and deputy mayor. 41 years of service to the fire department. So we're here tonight with three wonderful candidates we have for the Friendly Village Party. And um, I'd like to introduce them. First, I have uh, Norman Rosenblum, past mayor of the Village of Mamaroneck. Um, I ran with Norman from 2010 to 2008. We have long-line resident Nancy Wasserman and longtime resident Stephanie Livadini. So, Norm, why don't you take it away and introduce yourself and let everybody know what you're oh, all absolutely. about and what you should, why they should vote for you. Thank you very much. And, Lou, thank you very much. As, you know, for 2009 to 2017, you were my, uh, my right-hand man, Batman and Robin. So uh, <laughs> it's an honor for you to be here with us. Uh, but first, let me talk about people asking, what's the Friendly Village Party? The Friendly Village Party and the reason Steffi, Nancy, and I are running uh, is a result of what's happening in this country and filtering down actually into the, quote, Friendly Village of Amaranek. Our theme, in essence, is bring friendly back to the friendly village. People have to start learning how to talk to each other again. Unfortunately, uh, there is a, uh, a split, almost a schism, in this country where people don't know how to talk to each other anymore. Uh, you, know, you don't have to agree with each other, but um, have a little mutual respect, and that's what uh, we're going for. Uh, I find that, um, unfortunately, it's also happening in the village of Maranek, uh, where people uh, are splitting and, and they don't know how to talk to each other on a friendly basis, and that's what we're going to do, bring friendly back to the friendly village. Uh, but in essence, um, before we get to uh, any of the uh, issues at hand, which probably we will uh, be bringing up in the second meet the candidates, but I think it's important uh, for everyone out there to know uh, what we bring to the Friendly Village Party and the makeup itself. Uh, it is no um, chance the fact that uh, I am a, even though I've uh, been running on uh, other parties, uh, the reason we're doing this is something I've said for a long time. There is no Republican or Democrat or any other political party way when it comes to flooding or parking or anything else. Uh, and that's why I'm running with uh, Steffi and Nancy, who ironically are also registered Democrats in the village of Maranek. I happen to be a non-affiliated, uh, and that leads into our philosophy. Uh, so generally, our background that we're bringing uh, to accomplish this, uh, myself, I was a trustee in the village of Maranek from 1980 to 82. I was a former chair of the original chair of the tree committee. I was on the town of a, uh, a board of assessment review for the town of Rye for almost 10 years. Uh, I, while I was uh, fortunate enough uh, as the mayor in the village of Maranek, I was the chair of the LMC TV Board of Control and also uh, chair of the Westchester Joint uh, Waterworks. And of course, mayor from 2009 2017. Uh, before I go into more, I, I think it's more important uh, for Nancy and Steffi to give their background because I know uh, they are very involved. Uh, Nancy goes back to a name that uh, only uh, residents for a long time know is, would be Armin Genunzio, a former uh, uh, village, village manager. manager. And Steffi has been involved in, in many uh, uh, committees in the village and so on, as well as, as where you live and where you work. So why don't you take over, Nancy? Well, since Norman has mentioned Armin Genunzio, I'll explain. I decided I was going to go back to college, and I needed an internship. And Armand offered me a one-semester internship that lasted for two years. <laughs> <laughs> and in that time, I got the grants for the Narcotics Guidance Council, which we had a hotline. We had a walk-in and the community counseling service, which is still there. Then he placed me in the CAP Center. And I learned very quickly that there was so much substandard housing, something needed to be done. So I made a movie, showed it to the village board, and I wrote the grant for Washingtonville Housing Alliance, so I'm a founding member of that. Okay. Then I taught sex education at the Straight Gate Church because Bishop Powell asked me, well, as long as you're here all the time, Nancy, you may as well do this too. And since I had some degree in medicine, not as a doctor, of course, and worked for my husband, who was a pediatrician here, for 42 years. I could do that. And then I wrote the grant for what was called community services, which was the housing authority and also any housing 
that needed to be planned, plus whatever community services did as a social working agency. And sadly, um, a former mayor turned that money over to the town, so we don't have these, uh, this department or uh, what department. emanated from it. Right. Uh, okay, I was on HCZM for a short while. Um, I'm on the industrial area committee at the moment. And I can't even think of all the other things <laughs> <laughs> that I've been involved in. So, so but, what do you do in your free time? Uh, make trouble for people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get people thinking. Uh, yeah, that's right. And um, I'm very interested in um, housing, especially affordable housing. And people need a place to live, a workforce housing, police, firemen. Um, I think that we need to have this here. And um, it's not going to be a problem if it's done properly. And uh, yeah, I guess I've been involved with housing and drug programs and all these kinds of things for a very, very long time. And I'd like to see it uh, continue in that manner. Okay. Stephanie, you're up next. I'm up next. Oh, yes, tell us about yourself. So I've been back here living in the village of Mamaroneck for the past uh, 12 and a half years now. Um, I started work. I started volunteering on boards about 10 years ago. Sorry, eight years ago. Um, back in 2010, starting on the traffic commission for the village of Mamaroneck, where I served a three-year term. And then I went on to the budget committee, where I then served as chair for the last few years, but I did two terms there as well. Um, on top of that, I, you know, I, I'm around. I love I, all the amenities in the village, um, down at Harbor Island. Um, you know, I, just, I love living here, and my neighbors know that as well. Um, and I love my neighbors. Uh, in my professional life, I have been working for the last 10 years in various consulting and operational accounting type of roles where um, I've helped companies work out policies, procedures, different departments, cost savings, uh, cash analysis. And I was really able to apply that to work that we did on the budget committee for the time that I was there. And you know, I, I look forward to, um, to continuing that and really taking into account myself as a taxpayer and village fellow village residents as taxpayers and making sure that we are as efficient and effective as possible in all that we do and also planning for the future. Um, you, you serve on the board of directors of Palmer Terrace right. uh, Co-op also, I right? also yes. serve as a treasurer right. on the board of directors for Palmer Terrace Co-op. Um, I've been on the board of directors on and off for about 11 of the 12 years that I've been there, uh, but I've been acting as, I have been treasurer for the last, the last five years. So that's kept me quite busy, um, but we, even there, were able to really turn things around, save a lot of money, and really make it a place that people are just flocking to, to live. Wow. But don't, don't you also have a history, because everybody said, you know, who you're running with and this and that, and Oh, I remember her when, when she was, didn't she used to work in Brewers? Yeah, I so, remember, well, I remember her funny. working in it. <laughs> so uh, for anyone that may or may think I look familiar, um, I started working at Brewers Hardware back when I was 14 years old. Um, at that time, I had really curly hair and braces. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I grew up over there. I learned, uh, I, I met people. I really got to love this place and love the people that lived here. Uh, but I was there for about six years. Um, learned all kinds of things that I never thought I would know about. Um, but, you know, I like to joke around and that I can, I can build a house, but I can't program your VCR, so. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny, because uh, you talk about brewers, when I, w I stopped in the store and I saw your uncle Tony was there when I first got elected on the board, he says, you know, I need, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what do you, what do you need, Tony? What can I possibly do for you? You know, you're the guy, you need and goes, my niece. You got to get her on a committee for the village. I said, "Oh wow!" I said, "You know, Tony, the only thing we have is the traffic committee. Perfect. That's perfect." <laughs> I said, well, "Maybe you should ask her. She'll take it. Don't worry about it." So that's how long we go back, yep. even before that. You yep. know, sure. serving on, you know, so three great candidates with a lot of oh, experience and yeah. you know, longtime residents and the and the 
the families and stuff, energy ready to go. So, uh, what else can you tell us? Uh, what you well, want actually, to do? Some, some of the background that uh, I don't think even came out too much uh, when we were serving. Uh, I just retired a couple of years ago from Safe Flight Instrument Corporation, uh, which is a, an it's, an, it's a avionics manufacturer, and pr we were probably on three quarters of the world's aircraft. Uh, I had the pleasure and experience of being contracts administrator and uh, military sales, you know, chance to travel all over the country, all over the world. Uh, and I can tell you very honestly, I was never so happy as when traveling to the Far East, Middle East, South America is to come back to this country. Mm -hmm. Because I think what a lot of people um, uh, are forgetting is the freedoms that we have in this country are unbelievable. And that's why it's important uh, for the Friendly Village Party uh, to go forward uh, and, and, and basically uh, open up a dialogue again, once again. You don't have to agree with us, you can disagree, uh, but I can tell you that uh, based on that experience, uh, not only working with the Department of Defense and all the military branches, uh, but that translates into your experience of what you guys actually just mentioned, and that is the greatest asset we have in this village uh, is the diversity and the people that are here. And, you know, we've done things that, you know, we get credit for. But the reality is we get ideas from the people and you carry it and, and you support it and you carry it forward. And I made a couple of notes that was in here. The, uh, as an example, and this belies the fact of people saying, oh, uh, no, this party and that party. Th there are no Republican, Democratic uh, philosophies in the village Germanic that, that are, are valid as far as I'm concerned. Because what you're talking about is the friendly village and that diversity that's here. Um, Jim and Catherine Desmond came to me uh, and they said, you know, Norman, we, we'd like to get this building. We've been trying for 10 years to have a, a marine education center. So we went down, we looked, and we looked at the building. So you've got to be kidding me, this building's going to fall down. It was the right, one exactly. over uh, by the West Basin. Make a long story short, uh, we went over and we took the uh, building where the site is now. And I can tell you within three months, it was up. And now it's probably one of the most successful uh, part. Actually, it is now part of the uh, Recreation Committee and, uh, and uh, Recreation Department. Uh, and we have uh, Kyle that's in there is doing a fantastic job. And again, this translates into what's good for the village. I mean, you go down and you see kids down there. I don't care what it is, but the Spritzy and the Marine Education Center is just amazing. Uh, <clears throat> and while we're talking about Harbor Island, uh, there's the Harbor Island Conservancy. Yep. when you have individuals like uh, John Ferris, uh, June, and uh, Dick Ottinger uh, who give their time and dedication. And you go down uh, and working with some that we uh, created uh, the Parks Department with, with Barry Castorella. Uh, and Harbor Island Park was rated uh, with that new, uh, new department as the number one park in Westchester County. Uh, it was just unbelievable. And just uh, to that, just to that yeah. note, um, you know, on the Budget Committee, I definitely cannot take full credit for this. It was definitely myself and my other committee members. We, it took us a long time, but we sat together, we put our heads together, we evaluated the needs of the fields for Harbor Island, um, the upkeep of the fields for Harbor Island, and we were finding that we had no room in our budget that was specifically set aside to maintain our fields. We now have that. We got that into place. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but we were able to put that in place. So now, for our future, there is a there is a line item and there's an account there so that uh, there is money that will be made sure of to be used for the maintaining of our fields at Harbor Island Park. So, and so what I'm hearing is that you to, when you when you hear from the, the residents of the needs, the reaction gets things right. done from from the board and stuff. You know, it's just like Norman was talking about uh, Harbor Island. You know. On the weekends, we were getting complaints that the garbage wasn't being picked up, the grass wasn't done and everything. So we went to uh, the village and uh, the, the workers there, and we said, look, let's, we need seven-day coverage. And we started a policy where the guys would work on the weekends and take two days off during the week. So there was no cost to the taxpayers to have that coverage seven days a week. Ten years later, that policy is still going strong, you know, and uh, the field maintenance program with the water cannons and stuff like mm -hmm. that. and. Uh, Absolutely. The block parties, you've, you know, mentioned about the block parties, right. you know, and uh, uh, Halloween. Uh, spectacular. Spectacular, and, you know. Took it right off my list. Right when, we were, <laughs> you know, when we were growing up, we, you know, we had the Halloween party in Columbus right. Park, you know. We yep. used to go to the movie theater. So I said to Norman, you know, back in 2010, we got to start this Halloween thing. So 
Little did I know, every year we'd be dressing up and uh, <laughs> Norman would be in the coffin and <laughs> we'd be on the avenue handing out candy and stuff. And it's a tradition that's still going, but it's from the residents and the reaction from the board to get things done. And uh, what I'm hearing is you continue that Absolutely. tradition, right? And that's right. the important thing, you know, yeah. that, that's, that's what's important and that's what's important to our friendly village party is that the village of Mamaroneck has maintained a character and we need to keep that character going. People want to come live here and spend time here and spend money here for a reason. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's up to the board uh, to listen to the residents, hear what they're saying, and really keep the character of the friendly village friendly. But the friendly village party is for all. And I was very all surprised inclusive. at how many people have called me or even dropped into my house to talk about things that concerned them as it related to being listened to and wanting to speak and so forth. I, it was many more people than I had um, expected. And my comment was, and I stressed it, the friendly village party is for all. And I think that that is very, very important. So what I'm hearing is you're getting a positive reaction. Oh, yes. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. An amazing uh, reaction. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Oh, that, that, yes. that's Ac great. Across the board. Yes, so, and, really. Um, you're going to have a Meet the Candidates uh, little get-together or something? Maybe you want to yeah, talk on, about Yeah, on October 1st uh, at uh, Don Hito's from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, it's a very minor charge. We want everybody there. Uh, it's more Meet the Candidates again than it is a, it is a fundraiser. Uh, and the purpose is to um, foster exactly what we're doing, is, is welcome everybody. The main theme, aside from bringing friendly back to the friendly village, is deal with everybody on a level playing field. And a segue back to what you talked about before with the creation of the park department and then going into uh, uh, having seven-day coverage. Uh, even though we were members of the board, actually some of the uh, information we got back when the village decided to uh, get rid of one of the garbage routes, uh, and then we had a, uh, which, I'm not a big favor of is going out and spending money on these uh, uh, philosophers to come out Studies, but do nothing, yeah. nothing <laughs> but cut and paste. <laughs> and it really didn't work out. The first, it was almost a disaster the first two days. Now we had Robbie Welsh come in. He said, listen, this is what you guys have to do. In three days, it turned out perfectly, and it's working that way now. Yeah, Barry Castorella and, and the other members of the, not only the Parks Department, but DPW. There are also members of the fire department. They're residents in the village of Mamaroneck. Right. And you just have to work together, and that's what it is. Uh, I, you know, you mentioned the Chamber of Commerce uh, and what we did with the Spooktacular. Uh, but there are also other things and other groups that are here. Uh, <clears throat> Murphy Brothers and Mike Kinds. you have the St. Patrick's Day Parade, right. which not only celebrates culture, which is a big part of the village of Mamaroneck and diversity, it's also morphed into more than, than uh, Irish heritage. It's morphed into celebrating uh, the concept of immigration and people coming in. You know, my grandfather came in 1900, so my family's been involved across the board forever. And it's, like, it's a pleasure that I can tell you, people say, what are you, crazy? What are you going to politics for? Unless you're in that situation and knowing what you're accomplishing and doing, you have no idea what a great feeling it is just to help other people. It's amazing. And I, I will wrap it up, you know, and that you guys keep talking because you got to shut me up. I keep talking it up. <laughs> but the one thing we did and that we got from, uh, again, from the people is that we precedent setting in New York State the anti puppy mill legislation. Yes. And I can tell you to this day, a couple of weeks ago, I got invited to go to uh, the town of Greenberg because they're looking at it. Uh, state of New Jersey, state of California have followed our lead. Uh, and this is, uh, in essence, uh, treating everybody on a level playing field, giving voice to the voiceless, uh, and um, sort of paraphrasing Mahatma Gandhi as you can tell about a society and how you treat your animals. Right. Well, I'll tell you something. You can tell how friendly the friendly village would be and how you treat everybody on a, on a level playing field. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring that back uh, so everybody is involved and treated fairly, whether you agree or disagree. Uh, and I'll just wrap it up with one analogy. And that is, I'll tell you what, friendly villages and it represents and how you can have differing opinion. You have Lou Santoro, who is a nut, 
about the Yankees. <laughs> you have John Paul, who is a nut about the Boston Red Sox, and Pat Tuno with the Mets. And all you have to do is go on Facebook any time and see them going back and forth. But you can always see them together having a cup of coffee and a good time and laughing. Yeah. That's the friendly village of America. Right. Exactly. And getting back to the puppy mills, um, when the residents first came to us um, many years ago for, for that, and um, everybody said, it was, you know, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. You guys really shouldn't do this. You're going to get sued. You're going to get that. And right. we listened to the residents, and we took the bull by the horn, and Norman and I, we were down on holding up signs in front of the <laughs> store until the store closed and everything. But our law is present for all over the country. That's sitting, right? All over the country. All right. And it's never been challenged. Yeah. So, and um, Nancy, what would you like to tell us, you know, like... Um, before I start talking again. Saying, yeah, before <laughs> your enthusiasm, what, you know, what is your goals when, you're, when you are elected as trustee um, on the board? Um, we, we said we're going to listen to the residents and well, but that's different things. One of the most important things. Yeah. And, you know, after working for my husband and listening to everybody's problems for 42 years, uh, I think I'll be very good at listening to whatever anybody comes to discuss with me and then hope that I can make it right for them and for everybody in this village, no matter who. And I think that that's very important, just being able to listen and make people feel that they can come and speak and not to be afraid of walking into a board meeting and voicing their opinion. And I, you, know, I, you know, one thing what Mamaric does offer is, you know, it's, it's a working community. It's been like this for the 60 years that I've been here. You know, my parents have been here and, and things like that. So listening to the people who have been here and grabbing their experience and putting them on boards and stuff, um, there's something I think we should keep going. It hasn't been done like that in the last few years, but I think we need to go back to that. Well, I agree. Know? And yeah. broad representation from throughout the whole village. That's not just right. Little, not little cliques. Yes, yeah, no, and not yeah. only that, but people who are acquainted with what they're being uh, asked to do. In other words, uh, I mean, don't put somebody on a board who's going to just learn it. It's, it's right. you know, because we have plenty of people here who know about all kinds of subject matter. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you know it's pick, a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, yes, but use it. And right. I will say that uh, the past six years I've been in, on the president of Palmer Terrace uh, Co op. Stephanie has been on the board before me, but she's my go to person as far as <laughs> the numbers and uh, <laughs> paying bills and, and, you know, emails at one o'clock in the morning. Steph, I think, you know, we got to look into this. And, no. You know, That's my answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, yeah, and, and Stephanie does. She also serves on the resale committee at the co-op, so yeah. it's getting, you know, much more new people into our community, getting them adapted to what the village. We have America people is coming about. from all over. We have yeah. people coming from all over, and one of the first questions we ask them, not not one of, it is the first question we ask them. We say, why here? Why Mamaroneck? Why Palmer Terrace? Mm -hmm. And. It's, it's split. It's some people who, you know, I grew up down the street. I went to Mamaroneck schools. My parents are still there, and I'm continuing. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough of those uh, due to the rising price of housing and uh, affordability here. Um, but then we also have a lot of people coming from other places and just saying how much, how many wonderful things they've heard about the village, whether it be the schools or, or the part or Harbor Island um, and what we have to offer. So it, it's funny you say that. Three years, about three years ago, I was in uh, Disney, you know, with my family <laughs> and stuff, and we're the last people on the bus at 7 o'clock at night, and everybody's tired. And we're talking to, you know, I talk to anybody, I don't care who it is, <laughs> and I'm talking to the bus driver. and. I see he, uh, he has his name, and, he, you know, in the Disney, they say where they're from, and it said Bronx, no. New York. So I said to him, oh, where do you live in Bronx, New York? He says, oh, I live in Co-op City. I said, oh, from, I'm from New York, too. He goes, where do you live? I said, Mamaroneck. He goes, Mamaroneck? The bus stops. That's Harbor Island. That's the Fire <laughs> Island's Parade. That's the block sure. parties. I said, even in Florida? You know, he goes, yeah, when we come off from vacation, we plan our vacation just to get to Mamaroneck to do those things. <laughs> yep. you know, and wow. it's heartwarming to hear something like that yeah. where, you know, People from all over know about Mamaroneck, you know, and they want to be part of the community. But we only have a couple of minutes, so let's wrap yeah, well, up. And, actually, um, uh, just a segue from what you just said, uh, while we were in office, uh, it was very um, heartwarming and very proud, actually, that uh, initially it was CNN Money Magazine rated us uh, the top village, uh, number 63 in the United States, number one in New York State. Zillow rated us number one. Another group rated us number one. Uh, my fear is that, that we're not rated number one anymore. 
Uh, I'm, we have to wrap it up, so the next time we'll talk about why there are empty stores on Mimarinic Avenue, um, what we have to do. But uh, philosophically, uh, to go back to why we're doing the Friendly Village uh, of Mimarinic, uh, there's one thing that was drilled into my head as a child, is the most important thing you have is your family. Then obviously it's your extended family and then your community. And I am dedicated to uh, helping uh, people and this community. Uh, so it's a quality of life, and we want to improve quality of okay, life. Okay, no, I'm, and I, I'm and doing it with the best, too. Take a break. Yeah, we got two <laughs> minutes. Okay, so go. uh, I'm Nancy and closing, <laughs> and Stephanie, and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> no, I agree with Norman. We have to do things in this community for everybody. And we have to see what the problems are so that we can face them and accomplish what we used to have as opposed to what we're having at the moment. Uh, okay, Steph, before we wrap up, let's give yeah, a quick closing. So and, you know, we don't, we'll, we'll continue when we have our second Meet the Correct. Candidates. I'll leave you know? everybody on the cliffhanger with me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> listen, I, I, have, I have my full wholehearted support um, and, and confidence in my running mates, and I'm, I'm here and with them for that reason, and that I know that together as a team, we share that same goal whether it be from from different political point of views or not, um, that's not the issue here. That's not the point here. The point is our friendly village. Okay, so on, I'm just going to remind everybody on November 5th, the polls open at 6 a.m. Yep. to 9 p.m. Um, if any of the college students need a, an absentee ballot, um, everybody's always on the avenue walking around. Just let us know. We can get you an absentee ballot. And, um, you know, I speak for myself uh, as a resident here. To come out and vote on November 5th for these three energetic candidates who are going to be elected on November 5th and um, move the village back to the friendly village as stated in the friendly village party. Lou, I appreciate it very much. I have one question. How do Yankees do them, Lou? <laughs> Best record in baseball. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>